When people ask me how I learn languages, my answer is I don't. <laughs> I acquire languages. And this is why many people find it hard to believe that I can understand eight languages and only speak four, but more on that later. The thing is, these days I don't really spend that much time on studying languages. I used to, but I don't anymore. And I'm going to make a video on my French progress, <laughs> my French learning update, but I haven't learned or studied French for a long time, but I'm acquiring it. So in this video, I'm going to explain the difference between learning and acquiring languages, and I'm going to share my three best tips when it comes to acquiring languages effortlessly, including my best vocabulary learning tip. So if you're interested in learning more about that or acquiring that knowledge, continue watching this video. Hi, I'm Laura, welcome back to my channel. I make new videos twice a week now, and I talk about veganism, minimalism, traveling, learning, and lifestyle design. So if you like these topics, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that you're notified whenever I make a new video. Also, follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of my daily life. You can also become a patron of this channel, and this video is sponsored by my three courses. More on that later. So on YouTube, there are millions, if not billions of videos on learning languages. This is such a hot topic. Everyone wants to learn languages. So what do I have to say on this? First of all, I'm bilingual and Polish is my first language. However, I became bilingual at the age of three and my second language is English. I speak two more languages, French and Spanish. I understand four more languages and I've studied tens of languages as a linguist. So I'm a language enthusiast and I'm a linguist and I'm a language mentor with 10 years of experience. So I want to help you understand what it's like to learn languages without even learning or studying or even thinking about it because this is how I acquired these languages. <laughs> this is how I can understand four languages without being able to speak them. I used one method that I'm going to tell you about, which is a method that I wasn't applying consciously because I was still a child, but you can still apply it to your life no matter what age you are. And I'm also so passionate about sharing these tips on YouTube, which is probably why you found me and how you found me. So I want to start by telling you that learning and acquiring a language are two different things. Learning languages or studying languages is mostly associated with what we do at school when we learn something and learning languages at school or even on your own will probably resemble the type of learning that you're used to from school. So if you've learned math or if you've learned physics at school, chances are you've probably learned languages in a very similar way, which is reading about the theory, doing some exercises, maybe taking some tests, you know the drill, basic school stuff. However, in 1977, a linguist Stephen Krashen made a distinction between learning and acquiring, and he said that learning is basically everything that I told you. It's methodical, it is repetitive, it is in a controlled environment. This is something that we do at school, and you can learn languages in a way that you're used to, in a way that you were taught languages at school. Whereas acquiring is a natural process. Acquiring a language very much resembles the way we learn our first language. So when we are children, even before we are born, when we are in our mother's womb, we are already surrounded by languages, by our native language. And before we are born, we are acquiring so much knowledge and language input already, and we cannot speak this language until we are one or two because we are still processing it. And this is what's called the silent period, and it's also related to comprehensible input, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But the silent period is when we cannot really speak this language. So when we are six months old or maybe one year old, and we are still acquiring everything, but we cannot speak it yet. And after the silent period, we are eventually able to speak. We are making mistakes, we are learning about what's grammatical, what's ungrammatical, we are learning about collocations, but we are not doing it in a controlled classroom environment. Because the way our parents or our guardians teach us languages, our native languages, is not that they take out a course book and they make us sit at a desk and they practice drills with us. This is not how it works. We just listen and then we pick up 
on languages. And Stephen Krashen said that we can apply the principles of acquiring our first languages when we learn any foreign language, no matter our age. I just summarized the essence of Krashen's theory for you, but if you want to learn more about it, I will leave some links in the description box. So what does it leave us with? Well, is it better to learn languages or is it better to acquire languages? And the answer is both. <laughs> both are okay. Both are incredibly useful, except both work differently. So when you want to learn languages, you can do many things. You can do exercises, as I said, you can read about the theory, the grammar, you can do some vocabulary exercises as well, or you can make some flashcards the list goes on and learning will always be effective if you are focused if you are creative about it and if you make the process work for you and not make you work for the process I hope that makes sense but basically learning will always be effective but what about acquiring and how can we acquire languages because this is what happened to me in 2020 with my French I stopped learning learning, not acquiring. At the very beginning of the year, even though I was so motivated, I had a plan, I was so focused, but 2020 hit me. <laughs> it hit me hard and I couldn't do it. And my priorities changed. So I no longer dedicated any time to learning French in a focused way, but I was still acquiring French. So what was I doing? Instead of fighting myself, instead of doing what I was always doing, so learning no matter what, sticking to my plan, sticking to my schedule, etc., I decided to just flow. I decided to do what I was doing as a child and I surrounded myself with French with no intention of doing any study sessions. Now, I was still doing some study sessions every now and again, but what I was mindful of and intentional about was I created an environment in which I was learning French without learning it, so I was acquiring it. And if you want to acquire languages, which is still learning, you still know how to speak it, you still remember the words, you still remember the structures, but you don't really push it, this is what you can do. Number one is comprehensible input, which is something that Krashen postulated. So when we are children, the way we are able to speak eventually, so after we've been acquiring a language for some time, the reason why we can understand it and then produce it is probably because our parents or our guardians weren't talking to us <laughs> as if they were talking to science majors. They were probably talking to us as if we were children and they were using simple structures and simple words and sometimes when they were not talking directly to us they were using more complex structures when they were talking to each other or when they were talking on the phone and we were still exposed to all of that but the way we started to produce speech was mainly because we were exposed to the simple and easy chunks of the language and this is what you can apply to your language journey so if you're just a beginner surround yourself with a lot of beginner input so you can listen to podcasts for beginners if you're learning a language you can find a podcast and if it's on the beginners level you can listen to it and you can expose yourself to so much input that you will be able to understand very very quickly or maybe you can watch movies that you will be able to understand because they will be on the intermediate level for you and so on and so forth and you can do it as much as you can on so many levels but the basic principle is to surround yourself with input. I did it with French. I was still listening to French music. I was listening to French podcasts. I was following French influencers on Instagram and I was listening to their stories and I was reading their captions and I was doing everything I could to still surround myself with French but I wasn't forcing myself to learn or to study and in that way <laughs> even after seven months of not learning I still speak French, I still use French, I still can understand French. Do you get me? <laughs> so number one, listen as much as you can on your level and do it often. Tip number two, which is something that I said so many times in my free courses and in my videos, is whenever you come across a new word, idiom, phrase or sentence, 
say it out loud. Don't just read it in your mind. Don't just read it silently. Don't just note it down. Say it out loud. So whenever I came across a word in French, I said it out loud. And the reason why I did it and why I keep doing it and why I encourage you to do it is that when you see a word or a phrase or a sentence, the first memory trace that you create in your brain is there. It is already created. But when you say it out loud, you deepen it twice because when you say it you produce it and then when you say it you listen to yourself saying it you hear yourself saying it and the memory trace is deepened even more <laughs> and when you do it when you say things out loud immediately you have a bigger chance of remembering this word or this phrase later on even without revising it 10 times because the trace is already there and of course you can revise it later but what you can do immediately to save yourself some time and some trouble is to say it out loud immediately and that works wonders and tip number three is trust yourself and find the method of acquiring the language that will work for you even if it sounds silly or even if it doesn't work for anybody else and this is why i'm talking about it because there are so many videos including this one including many of the ones that i've already made that are listed in the description which tell you what to do. They tell you how to learn, how to study, how to revise, how to take exams, how to prepare for exams, etc. And this information is available for everyone, but there's too much of it. And you probably already know, or you have a feeling, or you can sense what works for you. And here I'm going to share an example from my own life when it comes to learning vocabulary, which illustrates this point perfectly. I am not good with flashcards. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. I found that when I create flashcards, I'm motivated at the very beginning. But as the time goes by, I'm not even willing to go back to them and revise the vocabulary that I once wrote down and take advantage of the spaced repetition system. I can't do it. I, I, just, I just hate it sometimes, you know? But so many people will tell you that flashcards are amazing, that apps like Anki are amazing and this is all good. But I still knew that I wanted to take advantage of the spaced repetition system because it works wonders. So I just had to figure out a way for me to learn vocabulary in a similar way as if I were doing this with flashcards, but without flashcards. <laughs> so this is what I do. And you don't have to do it if it doesn't work for you. And please don't judge me for whatever I'm going to say because this is my process, it works for me. And if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. And you will understand why I said it. <laughs> because the first time I come across a word, when I'm on my computer or on my phone, I open a new tab in my browser and I just Google this word and that's it. I don't do anything else. <laughs> Maybe I check the meaning, but I don't do anything else. And I leave this tab open. I mean, it is there. If I need to do something, I will open a new tab and the tab with this word will still be there in my browser. I am a tab hoarder, <laughs> which means that sometimes I can have as many as 120 tabs open in my browser. And please don't judge me for it. I do it, it works for me. I don't care <laughs> if anyone says that it's bad or something. But here's the magic part. I decided to use this to my advantage. So sometimes I need to close all the tabs in my browser. Sometimes I just feel too overwhelmed. And this is what I do with these tabs that have these words in them. I go back to them and this is the second time that I see them there just waiting for me to learn about them and this is the second time that I can check the meaning of the word. And then before I close the tab, I open the Anki app and I create a new flashcard with that word and with that meaning and I close the tab. And while I'm there, while I'm in Anki, I revise some of the previous words that I already acquired before. So I do it with as many tabs as I can and as I want to. And by the time I've added all of the words from my tabs and I don't have 120 tabs open in my browser, I have already revised the words that I had added before that for the third time. So as you can see, I'm still using the spaced repetition system but I'm using it in a way that works for me because I still 
create flashcards. <laughs> I still revise them sometimes, but I don't find it dreadful anymore because I, I love having so many tabs open, but sometimes I love closing them. And because I love closing my tabs, I started loving creating flashcards and revising them. And because not so many people do it this way, it works for me. And this is the way I learn vocabulary. <laughs> so long story short, the reason why I learned so many languages and the reason why I acquired so many languages and the reason why I still make progress even without learning anything is because I figured out what works for me and what doesn't work for me. It took me some time, it took me years of practice, but it doesn't have to take you years to find out what you like and what works for you because I created a course called How to Learn Languages in which we go over 50 learning techniques that I find the most effective and the most useful and you can take what works for you and reject everything else and I created this course after years of working with my students and I already discovered what works for the majority of my students and what works for some of them and I included the best of the best in this course so if you want to take it the link is in the description and if you're learning English I have two more courses that will be interesting to you Advanced Grammar University which is all about learning advanced English grammar in the most effortless and natural way I help you acquire it without even thinking about it so everything I shared in this video is in this course as well and if you want to learn practice and master the American accent in English you can join my American Accent Academy the link is also in the description box below let me know in the comments what you think about acquiring languages is it more or less effective than learning languages let me know and if you haven't subscribed yet you can do so right now you can follow me on instagram and you can check out the learning playlist that i included right here thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next video bye bye